the next step I want to take in the rehab of my k &T is to remove the drive pulley and clutch as well as uh, the rest of the gear train. Don't plan on doing anything major in here other than inspecting it, making sure there's nothing broken, and giving it a good clean and maybe a coat of paint. The first thing to do is to remove the cotter pin that holds this castle nut on to the end of the clutch shaft. This nut is not intended to be tight. It's here to adjust um, the clutch for when there's wear in the clutch plates. The first part of removing the clutch, I have to pull this adjustment pin, it's spring loaded, so I have to pull it and hold it out while I simultaneously turn the um, these little spider clutch fingers counterclockwise to pull it off the end of the shaft. Once it's loose enough, this bell on the end of the clutch shaft comes off and I can continue unscrewing these clutch fingers. With those clutch fingers off this side of the clutch, I guess it might be considered a pressure plate, can come off as well. Next thing to do is to remove the six bolts that hold the clutch gear ring on. The clutch drive plate gear is just loose inside this um, ring gear. Um, I could have taken that out earlier, but now I can remove the, um, the clutch ring gear. Next are a series of screws that hold the pulley bracket to the column. The pulley bracket is a fairly tight fit into the column and as such needs some force to pull out and k &T thought ahead and provided some threaded holes to use for jack screws. I'll alternate tightening each one back and forth to apply even pressure to pull the bracket from the column. With the bracket now loose, I can remove those jack screws. Well, it's got a little bit of weight to it with all this stuff attached to it, but the pulley and pulley bracket can now come right out of the column. I'll set this aside to get it cleaned up. Next to come out of here is the feed and rapid traverse drive bracket. Inside this bracket, there's some gears that take the power from the vertical shafts and transmits it horizontally into the knee. One of these shafts is spinning whenever the motor is on, and the other one only spins when the spindle is running. I believe the one that's always running is there for the rapid traverse. I just want to remove the cover of this bracket so it'll free up the two feed shafts. Somebody must have been in this before. I can't see any reason why this one screw would be a socket head cap screw and all the other ones filister head. Along with the eight screws on the front of the bracket cover, 
there are four screws in each of these oil retainer plates for the feed shafts. They're in a bit of a tight spot. They're slotted Philister heads. Um, so I'm using an extension on my uh, impact driver. It makes this a, a lot easier. Just got to try not to drop any of them into the coolant sump. Well, of course, there had to be at least one inaccessible screw. So I took a old 5 16 uh, hex wrench and cut most of it off so that I could reach in here, fit it into the socketed cap screw, and then use a wrench to get this out. <clears throat> My biggest concern, of course, is stripping that socketed cap screw. Not impossible, but it can be done. Um, stripping that at this point would be an absolute disaster because I don't know how else I would possibly be able to get this get this out if it was stripped in any way. So this is the second time in as many videos that I've needed the use of some kind of a specialty right angle driver screwdriver tool in order to get a uh, inaccessible fastener out of this machine. I think before I go to put this back together, I'm going to invest in uh, another tool. There's a company that uh, makes these right angle ratcheting um, tools, Chapman Manufacturing, made in the USA. Uh, I think I'll take a look on Amazon. I think I've seen them there and go ahead and buy a set. With all of the fasteners now removed, or at least the known ones, we'll give a tap on this. It should come loose and come off now. I'm actually rather surprised to see some rust in here. Uh, I'm not really sure where that would have come from. Originally, I thought I was going to be able to get away with only removing the front two screws from these oil retaining plates. And that was fine to get the bracket cover off, but in order to get these feed shafts out, I need to take the other two out as well. Next to come off is the feed and rapid traverse takeoff bracket. Uh, this essentially takes power from that pulley that we removed and transfers some of that down to these two shafts. This bracket has a number of Philister head screws, some of which are a bit hidden. This one screw here is a little bit tight, so I'll use my impact screwdriver to get that started. Never thought how useful I would find that tool to be. It really does do a number on some tight fasteners um, where a normal impact driver just won't do. There are a couple of socket head cap screws in this bracket that are there to act as jack screws to pull the bracket off of the column. One thing I have learned by watching other people take apart machines like this is to not overdo it. Uh, I'm pushing on these jack screws and it doesn't seem like it's really moving this bracket 
the way I thought it should be. I went ahead and backed off of the screws. I felt like there was probably another fastener that I missed. Yeah, and, and sure enough, there are a couple more filister head screws back here behind the shaft. They're a little tough to see, though. And with those two hidden screws now removed, we'll go ahead and try jacking this out again. And sure enough, that is coming out a lot easier the way that I would have expected to come out. The lesson here is don't force anything. You're liable to crack an irreplaceable piece of a casting. And now this will come right out. Those gears can slide to the bottom of those shafts not a problem I'll set this aside as well to get good and clean the last part of the powertrain I want to remove is the gearbox I've already removed all of the dials and handles so now it's just a matter of taking out these socket head cap screws and the entire gearbox will come out as one unit I imagine this thing probably weighs in excess of 150 pounds, so I'm not just going to pull it out by hand. I took some 3 8 round bar and threaded it, and I'm going to screw these in into several of the mounting holes. The idea being that I should be able to slide the gearbox out onto these rods and then hook up uh, a strap to it somehow with the engine hoist uh, to keep from dropping it. There are two dowel pins that uh, align this gearbox to the column and then there are also next to those dowel pins two set screws uh, that are used to jack this uh, cover plate from the column. I just used some off-the-shelf round bar from big box store, so these are probably not very straight. So I have the feeling I'm going to get some resistance in trying to pull this off. Before I get this thing out too far, I made up this uh, lifting handle I'll use in the top two mounting hole locations. Just a piece of aluminum strap and a couple of bolts. With some of the weight now being taken up by the engine hoist, I think I'm going to remove these guide rods. I think with them being not very straight and being right at 3 eighths of an inch, it's actually creating uh, more friction than they're helping. I think it was a good idea to at least try it. I think I might try putting these in the lathe, straightening them out a little bit first, but then thinning them down a little before I try to use them to reinstall the gearbox. 
Well, with the weight being held up by the engine hoist, it's going to want to swing forward a little bit. But I think um, I can pull this out of the column now uh, without too much worry. I have this Harbor Freight utility cart that's come in handy quite a bit lately. I think it might be a good place to put this while I'm uh, inspecting it and doing any other cleanup work. I'll put this uh, block of two by fours underneath the gearbox. At least that way the uh, clutch shaft uh, there won't be any weight on it. All the weight will be on the gearbox casting. I think I'll take a ratchet strap and strap it down to the cart. That way there will be no danger of it falling over. And this was the main reason for wanting to take the gearbox out was to look at the remainder of the oil and get all the rest of the gunk cleaned out of here. With the gearbox out now I can get a good look at the other gears that are still inside the column and from what I can see here everything looks to be in great shape. Here on the workbench is the power feed takeoff um, gears. Those all look like they're in really great shape. Um, the, the pulley and the clutch, it all looks like it's in really good shape. It should clean up nicely. And I have no intentions of taking this gearbox down any more than you see it right here. Uh, I don't think there was any issues with any of the bearings. I couldn't hear anything when I'd run the machine. It was it was nice and smooth, but to be quite honest, this was so easy to take out that if I had to take it out again, uh, I wouldn't hesitate. Well, that's going to be it for this video. I'll now spend some time doing some cleanup, a little bit of paint uh, here and there. So hopefully in the next video, for the mill will be putting uh, some of these parts back together. And a massive big thank you to all of the subscribers to the channel. If you're not a subscriber, I would encourage you to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you're notified when new videos are dropped. And don't forget to hit that like button. That really does help the channel grow with the YouTube analytics. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.